Okay, well, it's good that this is a two-part video because I forgot to forgot to tell you something in that first video. Uh, what I failed to mention was when you're when you're doing these equations, um, your you have your pressure and your volume and your temperature. Uh, we didn't talk about the units that those are in though, um, so let's talk about those now. First off, your temperature always needs to be in. Maybe we should make something on the side here. Temperature always needs to be in kelvins. Okay, so if you're going from Celsius to Kelvins, uh, I, I think I have a video made on this talking about uh, converting to Kelvins and, and that type of thing. Uh, so if you need to brush up on that, go ahead. But if you're going uh, from Celsius, which we're going to be doing in our problem, to Kelvins, you simply add uh, 273 to your, your amount, and that will get you to Kelvins. Okay, uh, your pressure, your pressure can be... It can really be anything. Uh, usually, it's atmospheres that it's in. Uh, it's sometimes millimeters of mercury. Um, it, it doesn't make a difference what your pressure is. Uh, your volume, your volume actually doesn't matter either. Your your volume could be milliliters. It could be liters. It's typically liters. Um, you know, it could be whatever. But uh, what's important is that your your units are the same. So if you have uh, pressure in millimeters of mercury over here, it needs to be millimeters of mercury over here. Uh, you can you couldn't have like atmospheres uh, on this side and then have millimeters of mercury over here because of course you're going to come out with the wrong answer. But as long as your units are the same, um, it really doesn't make a difference what you use. So, uh, but it, it does matter for your temperature. Temperature needs to be in kelvins. Okay, um, let's read the problem. Problem reads, a hot air balloon has a volume of 960 liters at 18 degrees Celsius. To what temperature must it be heated to raise the volume to 1200 liters, assuming the pressure remains constant? Um, what I would like you to do is uh, pause the video right now and just take a second and figure out what law we're talking about, okay? Um, so the law that we're talking about is let me get a let me get a little different color here. Okay, um, the law that we're talking about uh, it kind of tells you right in the answer. It says assuming the pressure is constant. So remember uh, to figure out a law, we're going to start with looking at what's constant, and in this case, it's pressure. Our pressure is constant. Um, and remember what law is is pressure constant in? It's in Charles' law. Remember you have. Um, Charles law. Uh, what's constant is your number number of moles, which is always constant, and uh, and your pressure. Okay. So now we know what law it is. Um, it doesn't you, you know? And see, this is the point I was trying to make in the other video. It it's not asking what law it is. So even if we didn't know what law it is, if we if we understand uh, the combined gas law equation, we could still get the right answer without knowing the right law, but it's good to know, know uh, what law you're dealing with here. Okay, uh, from here all we have to do is uh, plug, in, plug in the numbers. So what we're left with is volume over temperature of the initial amount and then volume over temperature of our ending amount. Okay, so let's read it again. A hot air balloon has a volume of 960 liters, so let's plug that in. Let's get a different color here. 960 liters at 18 degrees Celsius if we add 273 to 18 we get 291 um, where are we at okay so 291 kelvins okay um, and it says to what temperature so we're gonna solve for temperature so we're solving for X what temperature must it be heated to raise the volume to 1200 liters? So, all we have to do now is cross, multiply, and divide. We're going to take 1200 times 291 divided by 960. And I don't have a calculator here, so let me let me bring one up quick. Okay, so we'll do 1200 times 291 divided by... 960, we come out with 360 for the 
ease of numbers that's around, let's say 364. And remember, always put a unit on it, so this is going to be in kelvins. 364 kelvins is our answer. Okay, so that's just one example um, of utilizing the combined gas law, and of course we use Charles' law in this, um, but it, it really doesn't matter. Your problems are going to be very similar to this. It's just going to be, it's just going to give you different numbers um, and working with different variables. That's the only difference. So, um, like I said, the combined gas law is a very handy tool.